so last time we kind of talked about how we're having some issues in the area. I want to show the good about this area as well. So we're going to get into Pioneer Square and we're starting here in Occidental. Let's get into it. So first thing we're coming across is the Seattle Firefighter Fallen Firefighter Memorial that they have in Occidental Square. Kind of a cool little thing. They got set up for fallen firefighters. Their names are all on here with dedicated to and everything. So, kind of cool to have that little bit of history and pay tribute to those that have served the community. So, down this way would be Lumen Field and T Mobile Park for the Seahawks and Mariners, and also the Sounders. This would be Occidental Square. This area, you'll typically see people playing chess and checkers and stuff like that in this area. They'll set things up. Looks like it's already been put away for the day. I was wanting to show you guys the water fountain that they have down here as well. They have a little water fountain park that actually closes at 345. So we unfortunately missed that. Uh, this area looks actually very good. Um, this area had a lot of issues with tents and homelessness as well. And overall, it looks like they've actually cleaned up quite a bit of it. You have a few individuals kind of hanging around quite a bit of garbage right in front of us actually but you know at least it's looking a little better kind of a cool totem that they have here in Occidental Square a little play area for the kids so the Seattle name actually came from a chief that was Native American so you definitely see a lot of Native American art throughout the whole city and this actually is the oldest neighborhood in Seattle so a lot of history here and this is where they basically settled in the 1800s uh, they had a brief stint so when they settled in this area they actually started shortly at Alki and from Alki they actually ended up here in Pioneer Square and this was the very first area where they really established their roots and got everything going. So that was the 1800s, uh, late 1800s, I believe it was 1889, they had the Great Fire of Seattle and basically the whole area burnt down. And luckily economy was doing really good at that point in Seattle's history and they were able to quickly rebuild. But when they rebuilt, they actually just rebuilt right on top of the burnt down structures and the previous city that had burned. So what you ended up seeing was um, basically buildings as they were going up would have two entrances, one at current street level and one at the level that the buildings would be at once the city was built up. It's a really popular nightclub here in Seattle. It's like two floors, three different themed rooms. Uh, I'm a little too old for that, so not something that I'm going to be going towards, but nighttime that is, Trinity is a popular one. So anyhow, getting back to the story. Um, so they had two different, either lower level for current level to get out of the building, and then the future level for where they were going to get out to uh, be at when they built the city up. So a lot of these buildings actually have lower levels to them because... They just built the city on top of the old city. So, kind of cool building right here. So, when that happened, it wasn't uncommon for people at the time, because they had two different levels of the street, that they would actually um, get drunk, and you'd have to go up ladders to get to the sidewalks. So they had actually built the streets and the sidewalks up before uh, they had actually gotten the buildings all set to that same level so it wasn't uncommon for people to fall off the sidewalks and get injured or even die and that was a golden nugget I got from doing one of the underground tours years ago so highly recommend the underground tour it's not the most exciting tour because you don't get to see it lot, but they do show you what they can and um, it's interesting to see what old Seattle looks like on what they've been able to actually allow people to go down and see. So there's an underground. 
Uh, the underground tour, one of them is right here. That is the one that I've done, and it was very good because we had a really great tour guide. Um, I don't know how it works with uh, the other one because I have not used them, but it's it's just there isn't that much to show you, so it really depends on if you get a funny, enjoyable tour guide that's really knowledgeable. Just a really cool part of Seattle history to learn about. So I'm gonna keep on going here. All right, a couple things I forgot to talk about. One of them is the diamond parking sinking ship parking garage. So it looks like it's a sinking ship, which is kind of a unique uh, feature here in Seattle for a parking garage. This parking garage it was rated like one of the coolest or most unique parking garages. Some people think it's pretty ugly, but kind of a cool little effect it has in the way they had to build it. So we'll go up top and take a look at that real quick. And we'll also talk about Smith Tower. So as you can see, it's sloped on the inside of here too. Like it goes down all the way and then all the way up. Got some homeless individuals camping in there. So we won't go in that part, but we'll go up top. So it's all sloped upwards, which is kind of cool. All right, take a look at the view at this. So pergola is just right through there. Underground tour is just right over here as well. And looks like they might have an underground tour going right now, actually. All right, so Smith Tower, kind of a cool building. At one point, that was the tallest building in Seattle. It was among the tallest skyscrapers outside New York City at the time of its construction. Uh, it was the tallest building west of the Mississippi River until the completion of the Kansas City Power Light building in 1931. So there is actually an observatory for this building as well. So you can actually go up in it and do a tour. And absolutely gorgeous building. That's something I don't have time for today, but would be a really cool thing to check out. Uh, another thing that's also awesome, the Columbia Tower. Every year, 69 floors, firefighters run, or well, move quickly in full bunker gear all 75 pounds of gear on SCBAs going up to the top for cancer. But yeah, this is probably, Smith Tower is a very cool building here in Seattle, well known. Yeah, the observatory to go in is right here. It's John O'Donnell's is a pretty good Irish pub as well. So, 3 p.m. to 10 p.m., 3 p.m. to 11 on Friday and Saturday. All right, we'll have to come back and do that with my wife. Uh, talk to him in there. It's 1995 if you have uh, out of state. And if you're local here to Washington, it's $5 off per person. So pretty cool. Actually, I've never done that. That'd be kind of a fun thing to do. So I'll have to come back down here with my wife, do a fun little uh, favorite places to go downtown video or something. So we'll look into that. But yeah, this is, the oldest part of Seattle as far as style, so lots of really cool architecture and a lot of history. Um, it was known even back in the day where the police did not come into this neighborhood unless they came in a group or a team. It just wasn't safe for police to make their way around here. Um, obviously it's not as bad as that now, but um, it still has its issues. This has kind of always been known to have crime. So, one of the biggest areas is going to be the 500 block 
and 3rd, which is where the Morrison Hotel, which used to be where they kept uh, homeless individuals and addicts and people that were dealing with addiction. And once COVID happened, uh, that all got shut down and they moved them into hotels in Renton. I'm not sure if the Morrison has reopened. Um, like I was showing the other day on 3rd, where all the tents were coming back, that was uh, definitely the area that was impacted by everything that was going on. So, um, basically you'll see within a block or two radius of that area, uh, just a lot of issues. So, it's very common for theft, robbery, assault, a lot of violent crimes around that area. So if you're here uh, in this area, as you probably are seeing in this video, there, there are some homeless, there are some addicts, uh, there's some people just kind of walking around aimlessly, but there's also tourists around. And honestly, um, this whole area was covered in tents up until recently, so it's nice to see that that area has stayed clean and they're keeping it clean so far um but daytime you know this is a great place lots of cool restaurants lots of good food a lot of history a lot of arts uh first week in any month i think it's on thursday they have like an art event that they do so you can check out all sorts of cool stuff with that um i think they even it's like they have free parking after a certain time in the day um, but if you're staying here for a trip and you're in downtown Seattle, this is an easy walk to get to. So these guys right here, when you're looking at this, that actually is part of where there was an underground right underneath that. So if you're down below, you'll actually see the light people walking up from above. So it's kind of a cool thing. You'll notice that when you're walking around Pioneer Square, they'll have these areas of where the old underground was. And I think this actually might be an entrance to the old underground. I wonder if it is. Let's see. So yeah, that might be an entrance. We won't be able to open it, I'm assuming, but we can take a peek. Yeah, it's locked. Uh, it might be, might not be. But it is interesting when you look at the, the buildings, because this was at one point a landfill that they had filled in and so it's also sinking so there's parts of this that are just constantly shifting and going down i don't know what they're doing to address that as it happens uh, that's one of the things they talk about when you go on the tour is they show you how much it's sunk since x amount of time has gone by underbelly this looks like kind of a cool little place So my younger years, Pioneer Square and Belltown would have been the two places where I spent a lot of times at clubs and bars. Um, Pioneer Square is still that way. So lots of cool things to see and do. How you doing? Cream cheese bagel dog. So that's the famous Seattle hot dog. So if you want to know what a Seattle dog is, it's basically what we get late at night. Uh, basically a nice big sausage or hot dog with uh, onions and cream cheese and peppers and all the fixings that you want. But the biggest thing is adding that cream, cream cheese to it. So it is cool down here just because lots and lots of character on all the buildings. Everything has a ton of character. They have these bikes, those run all around the stadiums as well. So they call this a square, but if you look at the actual map of this area, it's not actually a square. Um, I will try my best to find a good map just to give you an idea of what it looks like. But it's a, it's a cool area, definitely worth checking out. Um, if you're staying downtown, I would definitely say this needs to be on your list for things to do and for things to see. De definitely come down and take a look. I 
and it's close enough to the stadiums as well um, that I would probably even, you know, try and tie in getting a baseball game in. Seahawks games are pretty expensive. Mariner tickets are still, you can get some decent prices for a game if you're in town and the games are going on. So overall, I mean, it's the daytime. Uh, nighttime is definitely a little sketchier. You'd want to be in a group, um, especially if you're female. You know, just be extra careful. Um, you just need to be aware of your surroundings. Uh, so I mean, I'm I'm seeing some stuff, but compared to what it was this is actually looking a lot better which makes me happy to say um, I think what's going on with the city is they don't have enough police they don't have enough enforcement where it kind of just shifts the problem from one street to the next or one block to the next or neighborhood to neighborhood um, and there's some of the policies that they've created that have really limited them on their abilities to actually police and make things better and there's definitely some pushback because of that. So the hope is that starts changing. Um, you know, I think it's pretty clear that the new mayor recognizes there's some issues. Um, there is a new, uh, is it attorney general? Might be getting that wrong, but um, she came, came in and she's basically demanded that any repeat offender that's causing multiple issues over and over instead of going to a diversion court and doing diversion services like uh, mental health and um, drug treatment and things like that that if they've continued to offend they just need to be arrested and it sounds like that as crazy as it sounds they're finally approving that and going to move forward with trying to actually keep people that are repeat violent offenders off the streets which is a good sign so this was the water park I wanted, or water fountain park I wanted to show you guys. If you come during the daytime, this will be open. But apparently it closes at 3.45. It's not huge, but it's just kind of a cool little waterfall garden park. And it's 8 a.m. to 3.45 and 5, 8 a.m. to 5.45 in the summertime. But yeah. Cool little walk around to do and show you but sorry should have gotten here a little earlier in the day so we're adding in a couple things just because I do think it's important so I'm gonna show them just so you're aware uh, so the third and 500 block like we talked about and then also third and Yesler up by the courthouse and the City Hall um, they basically closed off the whole park so the reason they did that is they had so much crime in this area that people didn't feel safe getting to the courthouse. The employees didn't feel safe. People just trying to come for their court case. So their answer was this. The entire park has been fenced off. So the park temporarily closed. So the other issue that you run into is this is where you get the bus as well and unfortunately there's quite a few people hanging out here you need to be aware of your surroundings so the Pioneer Square station is right over here and this is a regular trouble area so if you are going to come and use the light rail here just be very cognizant of where you're coming out um, there have been multiple issues with theft robberies and assaults in this area so uh, we will walk down a bit then maybe cross the street head back uh, this right here is the morrison and that was closed because of covid and it does not look like they have reopened it so that's part of the issue of what's going on is 
people are on the street, but from what I read, they actually moved them to Renton. In a red lion down there for a while. sidewalk. No one is going to really walk along that sidewalk because it's just not safe. So they basically own that entire space. And actually it looks like a few tents have been cleared out since we were here just the other day. But it's still not not good. So people are just going to avoid going into that area unless you uh, are part of the issue. I was saying it's all along um, third and 500 block anything around that area it's just this is what's going on this is kind of sad so a light rail right down here this will get you down to Northgate or down to the airport but again just be cognizant of what's around you when you're in this part. I would say this is probably the most dangerous ones to get off or be around in. Makes me happy to see that. I mean, uh, seeing some tourists, saw a few, few tours going on for the uh, underground while I was getting ready to get set up here. So things are starting to, you know, feel normal again, which is great to see. Things aren't perfect, but you know, this is this is considered one of the problem areas, and right now. Just walking around, I mean, it's it seems like it's closer to third in the 500 block like we already discussed earlier in the video. So, I mean, it's, it's promising to see those things. So, you know, as I've said many times before, the goal of this channel is to show you the city that I've grown up in. And I'm not thrilled about everything that's going on in the city, but I still love this city and there's still great things about it. Um, we just have some policies and decisions that were made to be compassionate and I think the result of that idea of being compassionate ended up being more of a hindrance on the city and honestly harmed a lot of people because of it um, but you know that's just my opinion and we'll see as things go on but we have seen crime rates continue to go up uh, violent crimes and non-violent. We still are, if you look at the numbers, our violence and crime is still lower than somewhere like Chicago or other cities that, um, even New York, well, I mean, granted, they're much larger cities, but if you look at it the per 100,000 or however you want to quantify it, we still have less crime. So I, I think it's important to keep that in mind, comparing the crime rates, but also, you know, just because somewhere isn't as bad doesn't mean that we shouldn't expect things to get better and want them to get better. And we have seen a dramatic change in the amount of safety and uh, how people feel in the city. And one of those things that has skyrocketed is we have one of the highest amount of burglary and theft crime in the country. And that's just because we've 
made things very easy. So I think, I can't remember where we fell, but catalytic converters from cars, which seems like such a simple thing to fix, you know, just make it so you can't sell those. Um, we have a major problem with people selling catalytic converters and ripping them out of people's cars as they sit in their driveways or parking lots or wherever they are. And just the theft and crime is really bad. We've, you know, as long as you're stealing under a certain amount, they're not gonna hold you in jail or jail and you're gonna be right back on the streets. So here again is what I was talking about. This is all there's underground underneath these, which is kind of, it's a fun thing to see. So, you know, some of this is just self-inflicted and if we tightened up the laws and had a little bit of a higher standard, some of that stuff would alleviate itself, which would be nice to see. We went there before a Seahawk game one year. That was actually delicious. So, whenever I'm doing these videos, I get comments like, oh, you didn't go down this street, or you didn't go down this area. Um, this video, this is more of where I have spent time going to Mariners games, going to Seahawk games, you know, nights out on the town. Um, I don't try and go to every horrible street that I can think of. So, there very well may still be some areas in Pioneer Square that are pretty shady. And one of those like we've talked about is the 500 block and third and basically all within that radius of that area but we're gonna walk over to the stadiums and I think that's where we're gonna finish the video at so so this area goes to Pioneer Square and then it's the Soto district and I've parked my cars or my parents parked my our cars and we've walked to the games this way or from the south end which would be from Soto. Been to Sluggers quite a few times. It's been quite a few years since I've been there but that was always an enjoyable place. There were times where we couldn't get into a game but we came there to watch the game. It's too packed. So if you're local how are you feeling about us no longer having Russell Wilson. Uh, I'm still a little shocked to be totally honest. I <laughs> can't believe he's gone. It's a little surreal. Sorry, I had an issue with the camera, so resetting. Hopefully that last part got captured. But going back to the Seahawks, yeah, I uh, think Pete Carroll and John Schneider are trying to capture that magic in a bottle again based on the uh, draft class they had from the draft this year. It feels very reminiscent from the year before we got Russell Wilson, so I'm not thrilled that we lost him, but you know, depending on if we can find a quarterback in the next draft, we'll see what they can pull off. It's either gonna be they know what they're doing or it's gonna be time for maybe some changes, so. That'll be interesting to see how it works out. Also interested to see how Russell does with the Broncos. Um, first game of the season, you guys. Russell Wilson versus whoever our starting our starting quarterback is going to be. So if that's is it Locke or uh, I'm not sure who it'll be. I know they've talked about trying to get Baker Mayfield, but he's got something going on with this contract where no one wants to take on that burden and the Browns don't want to eat it and I would be not the most happy if we got Mayfield over having Wilson I think you go from a stellar individual into a guy that's going to be an okay quarterback but his uh, reputation off the field may be a bit of an issue kids to a Mariners game yet. Um, hoping we can do that this summer. I think they'll really enjoy it. It'll be a fun experience to get them to see what it's like to go to a game and everything. So, Pro Shop Store. This is, we got a few of these in the area. Uh, I think they still have one in Linwood. But anything Seahawks, I think they have 
Sounder stuff in there too. So our other new team is the Kraken. Pace, 26 minutes, 23 seconds. Yeah, okay. I need to get my phone to, or my watch to stop talking to me when I'm walking. But we just got the Kraken and they are at Climate Pledge Arena, which is the old Sonics uh, key arena, which got renovated. As I've talked about before, we went and saw Jacoy there for a comedy, comedy show, it was really good. They did a really good job with that arena. Parking is a nightmare in that area, so if you're going to an event around there, it might be good to find a different way to get in to the event. I'm guessing we might have a Mariners game today because they have all the food trucks set up and it looks like they're getting ready, so. It's pretty common to grab some food on your way into a game. It's all along here. But, yeah, it's been a uh, it's been a fun 20 years with the Seahawks. The 90s were kind of a dark time. 80s, I was a kid, so didn't really pay attention too much in the 80s, but enjoyed watching games. But it, you know, since the early 2000s, the Seahawks have been a pretty viable team every year and it's a little worrisome to see what will happen with us. Showbox presents Dylan Francis and Flostradamus. Five seconds of summer. It's when you start feeling old. I have no idea who that is. I don't know. No idea. Flostradamus. Does it make me feel old, sound old that that name sounds absolutely ridiculous? <laughs> Alright, so I stopped for Seattle Dog. Cream cheese, grilled onions, bagel bun. So I guess this event is for an EDM concert. I was talking to some people, am I just too old? And apparently I'm not too old. It's just, uh, they're a little younger than me and I have never heard of them. I'm also not really into EDM. Good, good hot dog though. Yeah. So the vendor at this hot dog stand, if you've never had a Seattle dog before, he rings a bell letting everybody know. So here's the video of that. Ah, oh, Seattle Dog! Got another one! <laughs> <laughs> Might sound gross, but definitely try it. Alright. Kamal Adams, Daryl Taylor, Jordan Brooks, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, Dwayne Brown. Feels weird. Not seeing the Legion of Boom in there, not seeing Russell. I miss Doug Baldwin too. Alright, so we're going to end the video walking around the park a little bit. Uh, we're going to walk over and I'll show you the glove statue and Edgar and Griffey. And then we'll be uh, signing off. But Safeco is a pretty cool stadium. This. Uh, has a retractable roof, so obviously with it being a sunny day today, they have the roof open, ready to go. And oh, you know what? It's not Mariners. Maybe graduation. Maybe a graduation thing, I don't know. They have some kind of event going on. So this was Safeco. Now it is T-Mobile Park, which I'm still getting used to. I'm still getting used to those pink neon lights. First, I really didn't like them. Now they're they're kind of growing on me. Glove. Or sorry, the mitt. Other than 
Russell Wilson, I think the other person that's probably your top Mariner or top sports athlete of all time would be King Griffey Jr. And they have a statue of him that we're going to be coming up on in just a minute. And a few years ago, or actually it might have been more than a few years ago, but somebody actually broke off the bat of this bronze statue. So they actually had to repair it. But before Wilson, Griffey would probably be the most iconic sports figure that the city has ever had. Um, and before Griffey, I think you'd probably say Larton would be in excess. See how from the 80s, that was the first sports figure that I really knew of other than Michael Jordan and all the big ones that came into the NBA and Gary Payton and Sean Kemp and Detlef Shrimp. But those are kind of the big names to think of. And then Edgar Martinez as well. 95 Mariners was a pretty exciting time. That was our best season as far as Mariner baseball goes. At this point, I haven't really paid attention to baseball as much anymore. So I look at all these names and I don't recognize most of them, which is sad to say. the Griffey statue right here. They, got, they definitely got some kind of event going on. Check this out. It's all baseball bats. Greatest players in baseball history. The kid was the face of the game for over two decades, 1989 to 2010, and was inducted as a Mariner into the National Baseball Hall of Fame on July 24th, 2016. a hard pill to swallow when we lost Griffey as well. Uh, I think he went to the Reds if I remember correctly. And Edgar Martinez, the best right-handed hitter of his era. Gar, Gar played his entire 18-year career in Seattle. The double he hit to win the 1995 American League Division Series was one of the most memorable moments in Seattle sports history. He was inducted as a Mariner into the National Baseball Hall of Fame on July 21st, 2019. So that's what I'm talking about that season. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. We didn't even win the World Series. Mariners have yet to win the World Series, but that was one of the most memorable moments in uh, Seattle history. Other than us winning the Super Bowl and all the success we've had with the Seahawks. So anyhow, that uh, concludes a little update to Pioneer Square. Great to see people here having a good time. Uh, beautiful day today and still have some issues like not trying to cover anything up. But I also want to be showing you there's still great things to see and do in the city. It's not all bad. We just have things that need to be addressed. So until next time, keep exploring. I'll see you soon.